Hello, everyone. Well, all of us are feeling some anxiety and stress nowadays. How can Ayurveda help is the topic of our session today with Dr. Suresh Swaranpuri, who is an award-winning doctor of international repute. Dr. Suresh has been advocating Ayurveda throughout the world for the last 25 years. He is founder and director of Europe Ayurveda Academy, which is one of the largest and most pioneering provider of Ayurveda education. We are honored to have him on our show today. I am Amita from Nourish Dog, a platform for natural and holistic therapies. I am honored to in, um, <clears throat> introduce all of you to Dr. Suresh, who is joining us live from Europe right now. Namaste, Dr. Suresh. Namaste, Amita ji. Well, I think we can get started. How can Ayurveda help us, all of us right now? Well, all of us are going through some anxiety and stress. That's the topic. Uh, we are going to uh, learn from uh, Dr. Suresh right now. Uh, namaste, everybody. And namaste, Amitaji. And uh, thankful to, uh, very thankful to Nourish Doc, uh, who is doing exemplary job, uh, inviting all walks of uh, life, uh, especially the Ayurvedic doctors, uh, another areas where the life is involved. So uh, it's my pleasure today to talk with you, Amitaji, and all the listeners uh, who are entire US and Europe uh, joining me today. It's my, it's my pleasure also to give this talk because we are passing through a tough situations right now in the world. So it's a kind of mental anxiousness and uh, the stress and depression, these are the main uh, things which is uh, prevailing these days and which we are working out uh, in various uh, areas uh, in Europe through the academy, <clears throat> education, and uh, through the clinic oriented uh, things that is giving uh, uh, prescriptions and all those things to the patients. For me, most important is the education of Ayurveda education is the most uh, uh, important area where you can uh, penetrate into the society. The changing the entire structure of society is very important with this knowledge. Okay, today we are going to talk about uh, um, certain areas where Ayurveda uh, will be working on the stress and anxiety. First of all, we need to know, we all know about the stress, anxiety, nervousness, depression, all the, uh, the uh, for me, they are all synonyms. I don't see them as a different disease. It's just synonyms for me because they are born out of one, one area. And uh, we all know the stress, how it develops. And uh, it's, it's actually the role of stress in etiology. So many diseases uh, are happening uh, within our cells, and uh, also we, uh, within uh, within our cells, also uh, from the external sources. In Ayurveda, uh, it's uh, the stress is the no name. Actually, it is not a completely coined. We, we could call it as uh, sahasa. That is uh, the stress. The perfect word. There is not des designed word in Ayurveda, but still we can. We, it's caused by ojokshaya. There's lots of immunity. So the main, the main area of concern with the stress is not mental disability, according to Ayurveda. It is the immunity which affects at the loss at the beginning itself. So this is the area I'm very concerned with my patients. It's not that you, you have some stress and nervousness, you do, you do some meditations, it's fine. But what else, what exactly what happens at the end is the you lose, start lose immunity. This is what Ayurveda very clearly mentioned. That's what exactly happening. The stress, the now this is the reverse is happening, which is the immunity is under uh, big issues now, which is affected by the viruses. And this is causing the high stress levels. Actually, that's not the way. It's another way it is happening. Because of the public, because of the entire world is under pressure, before the viruses came, that pressure, that stress, it's uh, reduce the immunity system already in the people. This, they're all, all people are vulnerable to this virus. So what exactly happening, Sahasa means 
Ojuk Shaya. Already there is a loss of immunity in the world now because of high stress levels since 10 to 15 years. Let, well, let me put it like this. Since 10 years, there is enormous changes in the world taking place, wars, so much of pressure. And already 2008 depressions came, recessions, so many things, financial structure collapse, everything. This all has influenced human uh, immunity and mental system. So the immunity was going down day by day, day by day in the public. That, that's the one of the reason why we could see the, the uh, complete ex, uh, exploring of this virus this is happening. It's not happened just because of the coronavirus. It is happening all these 10 years, the immune system has gone down according to very uh, Ayurveda, very beautifully explained, Vojokshaya happens. Next slide, please. We need to understand what is stress first. We all know that the stress is produced by three hormones, right? Cortisol, ACTH, adenocorticotropic hormones, all these uh, hormones which influences the physical functions and mental functions of the human body. But unfortunately, if they go in excess, prolactin, cortisol, ACTH hormones, they all these are hormones essential for the human body, human mental and physical system to function. But what happens when they're when they get exaggerated or imbalanced is they get the influence on the different system on different systems of the human body, right? So what is stress actually? So most of us, most of the entire the psychiatry, everybody they say the stress is you, because influenced by outside, people are irritating you, so much of uh, factors are influencing you, weather is influencing you, people are influencing you, so you're getting the stress. Actually, according to Ayurveda, that is not correct. Stress is the one happens because of our own inability to maintain our emotions and thoughts. This is called stress. Your own inability, you learn that you're not able to um, organize your thoughts and emotions in a balanced way. When, they are, when you are not able to manage your own thoughts and emotions, it is leading to stress. It is provoking the cortisols. This inability of management of your own thoughts and emotions provokes the cortisols, provokes the ACTH, provokes the prolactin. This is what exactly the pathological uh, uh, is taking place in the human physiology from the stress levels. And in Ayurveda, the ancient system, very nicely they described it's not something stress and nervousness is identified now in the present world, but it has been identified long back in Ayurveda because Ayurveda is one of the superior science. And Ayurveda is the most advanced science on the planet. It has got a lot of technologies how to pacify this stress and anxiety and nervous systems. We, you, there is a lot of technologies which is available in Ayurveda but how to organize them? That is the question. And how to take it to the mainstream of the public, there is another thing. So the next word, what we see is, Ayurveda is based on the idea that life and lifestyle hormone, yes. There's a hormone inside our body, you know? Like you have a family, you have a husband, wife, children. If you don't have a harmony between you people, there is a problem in the home. So in the same way, if there is no harmony within your physiology, naturally you're not harmonious with others. Whether it's a disorganization of mental structure, whether the disorganization of the physical functions, if there is no harmony between the mental structure and physical structure, naturally you are in deep trouble. When you, have, when you are in this kind of situations, you're going to be, you're going to influence the people very, very badly in the society. So the problem is, I always tell the people, people, the problem is not in the society. The problem is not with the public. The problem is within us. A individual disharmony can create disharmony in the society, could create disharmony in the entire state, entire country, entire world. So the individual responsibility is very important for the harmony of the planet. That's why in my Facebooks, also I, when I write my thoughts and all those things, I always say there should be a, a organization within you. 
if you that is why in ancient days we have yogic teachers yogic masters ayurvedic rishis they explain how to how to make your physiology perfect they never said that you are, you go and correct everybody in the world no they said how to make your own mental structure organized they very clearly mentioned all the books how your physical function should be organized when you are in good balanced condition you're going to have a harmony in the home so all the disharmony happening in the family is because of our own disharmony in our physiology so the creating harmony with the person that's what exactly i said a harmony between a person and environment is nothing but the physical transactions you know the transaction which is taking place between a human being and environment we are not aliens on the planet we are a part a piece of life on the planet right we are the piece of life on the planet we are not born only for us. the other creatures are not born only for us so i will always tell uh, people you know in my conferences i tell them if the insects worms everybody disappears in the planet we will die in a month we all will die but if we disappear in the planet all the animals and plants will be safe <laughs> because that much that much human beings are making mess uh, in the planet so there is no disharmony because we are not harmony within ourselves so we are trying to create we are right we are trying to solve the external problems most of the time we are trying to correct the external world then you are not in a perfect balanced condition how you are going to correct the world this is what exactly is happening in the planet we are having all the infrastructure we have all the engineering methods and everything to correct the other planet but there is no method to organize your own physiology that's where the stress comes up so we have in ayurveda and yoga very lovely very beautifully they explained the different technologies how to organize meditations yoga pranayamas there are so many technologies available in ayurveda we'll discuss about this later and next one please as i said uh, earlier the stress is the greatest uh, threat to well being of people it is actually not the stress the human beings is a great threat to the planet itself <laughs> it's a big threat to the planet and you know we are all uh, worrying about the corona this that all the time we are worried but i always tell in my facebook i write some my thoughts today every day i always tell the people if the human be it is a human being who is uh, uh, making the mess it's not the virus actually <laughs> why does just needs a host but we are making mess we are the carriers human beings are the carriers so where where should where we from where we should start our work from the human beings not corona virus see before also so many viruses came and went those days technologies was not there those night the medical facilities was not there people were dying now we have all the facilities we have all the technology we are in the best period on the planet we have whatsapp we have uh, viber we have uh, zoom we have so many things are available yet we are not happy this situation if it continues for other another 10 p 10 years or so a simple flu can destroy the world so the problem is within human the human being should be responsible in behavior then if you if you are under stress constantly you can't identify what's going on you you can when you cannot correct yourself you cannot correct the corona virus no virus you can you, you can't correct they are pumping billions of dollars for uh, vaccines and all those things i doubt unless for me it's they should pump billions of dollars for the hormone in the human being to to find a technology to improve the human harmony inside the harmony uh, harmony is within the human being so the money should be spent on that area according to me then virus will disappear irresponsible behavior stressful activities you are trying to correct everything outside from your body which will not happen 
which will never be, uh, even though the vaccine comes, okay, the vaccinations, all these things can remove your mental pandemic. People will be secure, okay, I have vaccines, I will be happy. So at least there is some, in, there is some progressive thoughts that I will be okay. So that kind of mental relief people can get, but about other area of the immunity, I'm not sure of that, hope things will be fine. And the stress weakens the immune system, making the host, we already discussed that. The OGES, you know, we, we're going to come up with uh, uh, the subject of OGES a little later, I will explain you. The, the strength of the host diminishes the ability of the micro same thing I said. If the strength of the host diminishes, the ability of the microorganism organism to penetrate its defense increases, right? If you see most of the diseases like Vata, Pitta, Kapha, all the rogas, according to Ayurveda, Tridoshas, the imbalances of Tridoshas, the diseases which come out, coming out of Vata, Pitta, Kapha, the diseases which come out of the Datus, the, the Agni failures, all the diseases, if you see, 95% of the problems are coming within ourselves. It is only the five to six percent problems are coming from outside. Very clearly in Ayurveda mentioned. So where is the problem? Not virus, it's we. If we are responsible, the things will be fine. So in Ayurveda, we, we, they wrote very clearly, Janapada Dvamsa, about viruses, bacteria, they mentioned, but hardly you see much more description about them in the science. They explained more about the personal level, diseases happening. There are 90% of the disease happening, it's self-help. There is no need of I mean, anything from outside, it's self-help. We are generating the disease, we are manufacturing the disease. If you go to any shop, I always joke with my students, if you go to any medical shop, any, um, any uh, groceries or anything, uh, you buy medicines, right? You For calcium, you buy medicines. For uh, throat pain, you buy medicines. For fever, you have medicines. But you're not going to buy buy arthritis or diabetes for $50, arthritis for $100. You're not going to buy that. It's not available in shops. So the diseases are happening within us. So where is the problem? There we need to find the solution. Instead of leaving that area, we are searching outside the body. This is what exactly the mistakes are happening by the human beings. So the defense mechanism, the microorganisms, they enter in our body because you are inviting them. You are asking them to come and stay with your home as you are inviting them to stay at your place forever. If a gust comes, you can give some coffee and drink. I always tell my students one thing. If a depression comes, treat it as a gust. Give some coffee and say bye-bye. But if you don't give anything to the depression, it will stay with you. <laughs> so, so the management is very important here. Next slide, please. So according to WHO, uh, we also work with the WHO. We have, uh, uh, because we follow their syllabus and everything, and I uh, have some connections with the WHO too. And uh, we are working indirectly with them, and they are helping the syllabus and everything we follow with the WHO. See, so very clearly they mentioned mental health as a state of well-being in, in which the individual realizes his own ability. Exactly, I told them. You have to understand your own abil abilities, how much stress of life you have can work and how fruitfully you can organize them. There is no medicine on the planet to cure the stress. And if you see in America, for everything, for uh, having no stress, tablet, for appetite increasing, tablet, for decreasing appetite, tablet, for sleeping, tablet, for not sleeping, tablet, for having gas problem, tablet, for constipation, there's a tab tablet, for not having constipation, also tablet. This is nonsense. So in America, they are spending $3 trillion for terminally ill people, am I right? This is beyond the Indian budget, total country budget it is in India. So instead of, putting so much of money into the terminally ill patients, they could, have, they could have done from the childhood. A lot of money we could have spent from the childhood, develop the immune system. Make the put entire your money to develop in the immune system and see how the entire country will flourish. Leaving that, 
we are we are working more we are spending a lot of money on the virus so this is the problem unless until we don't identify it's not the question of virus i'm talking generally we are not focusing on our human physiology that much which we are focusing on the infrastructure outside the body our body is also an infrastructure right it's a complex physiology with a lot of multiple organs are functioning in tandem with the mental system and we have a transactions with the nature breath is a transaction hearing is a transaction from the nature you know we are all we are not aliens we are part of the nature everything is transactions without transactions you cannot live one uh, somebody was asking me what is life i said just stop breathing <laughs> you will understand what is life <laughs> just stop breathing you will understand so it's very important that we we need to understand how to enhance our perceptions from external world because we are having bombardment of information it's not the knowledge what we are getting outside the world all the five sensory system what is receiving is the bombardment of information it's not knowledge so information is different from knowledge knowledge is the one which makes you less stress informations which increase the stress so this is the difference if the people if we understand the difference between the two then we will be a safe uh, human on the planet so here uh, stress life and community mental health is a term used to describe either level of cognitive or emotional well being and absence of uh, mental say absence of disease is not a healthy person this is not the term coined by who absence of disease is not health harmony within yourself and balancing the mental system and physical system is the health in 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 ayurveda we say samadosha samadatu samagnischa malakriya prasannatmendriya manah swasthya ityabidiyate means they never they never and if you see in that sloka there is no virus or no coronavirus mentioning is there there is no bacteria name is mentioned they said completely bring up your harmony within you they never uh, addressed external uh, sources coming from other outside the body they addressed entire physiology only what a science it is that's why we have our ancestors in india in pre ancestors and everybody they were out doing yoga pranayama all these meditations technologies what they do is they bring the perceptions within your physiology and they they enhance the perceptions of your sensory organs so the perception from outside it's very important and what is needed only we perceive a rest you should remove it from your data in the brain so if we don't understand that the sufferings will be very high the stress is also nothing but excessive memory in your brain because you perceive a lot of informations somewhere it should be stored no it should be stored like in your mobile you have a memory what happens when the memory is full it doesn't function <laughs> so you have to delete or you have to add some other sim card or something to enhance the work of mobile the same thing you need to delete what is the process of deletion again go back to the technologies pranayama yoga all these meditations and the lifestyle a proper lifestyle also can delete your memory so memory is uh, stress is also nothing but the excess memory which is filled in our body and the and the mind okay next one please you can also see here the mental illness the disturbance of the relationship between adaptive cap i already explained the adaptation the capacity of adaptation within yourself individual and environment environment here means other than your body it can be your family it can be your wife it can be your sun it can be your children and there is a nature around you if our if our uh, perceptions are weak our immune system of weak then our sensory organs the, uh, the our sensory organs with the nature the transaction is minimized when the transaction is minimized then you are prone for diseases and high stress level happens when there is a transactions or decreased that's why you see breathing is a transacting you know every day you are transacting with the nature 
you're taking oxygen from the nature. So you're breathing, breathing, and, uh, and also your excretion, you are outletting. So inlet, prana, apana. Prana, apana, this why you are very important for the balancing the human harmony. Prana and apana, these two, two values are the, which makes the human to survive, human to live on the planet. So by practicing again pranayamas, uh, technologies is available in our Ayurveda. And also most important in Ayurveda, very, very clearly they mentioned is lifestyle. I will come to that later. Uh, next, please. Mind and mental health are the central focus of the Ayurvedic medicine, manas. So in Ayurveda, manas, I told you earlier, Samadosha, Samadhatu, Samadnishchi, Malakriya, Prasanna Atma Indriya Manaha, Swastya, Prasanna Atma Indriya Manaha. They divided the segment into two portions. One is physical level, that is uh, dosha, datu, agni, to balance them. And second, they concentrated about the consciousness, sensory organs, and mind. Beautiful it is. I don't think anywhere in the world, any science could have explained so clearly like Ayurveda, what, it's a very advanced science. We are thinking it's old, old science. No, Ayurveda is very advanced. Even it will be useful for another 100 years from now. It's for sure. Even after 100 years also, the science will be beautiful, beautifully adopted to the planet. So the manas, the mind, you know, if you take mind, there are three portions in the mind. One is external mind, middle mind, and inner mind. Inner mind we consider as the consciousness. The consciousness, in the mind, if you see the external we call it as uh, manas, buddhi, hankara, chitta in Ayurveda. There are 16 types of constitutions, psychic constitution is, is told in Ayurveda. Out of that four is very important, buddhi, manas, buddhi, hankara, and chitta. All this uh, manas, buddhi, hankara, the mind, intellect. Intellect is the buddhi. So which gathers all the information from outside the uh, planet, all the sensory organs, it gathers and stores. So wherever the and the intellect discriminates the informations, that discriminations after the informations, this is passed down down to the inner mind. But unfortunately, what happens is uh, it's a full of memory, intellect, you know, full of memory. You're passing the you you are seeing the internet constantly. You're listening to the music. You're doing all so you're bombarding the sensory organs all the time. What will happen? The manas, this is a mind, stores the all the information. Whatever you see, it absorbs. Immediately collects and stores in the entire body. The memory is not only present in the mind. The memory is also present in the entire body. Each cell has a memory. So that is why uh, all the, because of the, tra the transformation from the external sources to the internal, the, wherever the memory is present in the body, there is a stress. So what is the way? Consciousness is completely absence of memory. That's why our rishis, masters, yogic masters, they were all working to reach this state of higher level of consciousness. Because we don't have that technology, people are suffering till intellect. So intellect, 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 intellect. They're suffering with this intellect because of bombardment of information. The knowledge, the knowledge is the one which helps the humanity to become better. The knowledge is the consciousness. Understanding the consciousness is the knowledge. And rest, everything is information. There's a big difference. The more the information you have, the more the stress you have. Simple. So what does it mean? Stop it. <laughs> as much as possible, you prevent it not to enter you. You're seeing me, I'm seeing Zoom. I'm work, uh, you're working in the Zoom all the time. You're doing something, you're all listening. Your mind has no place, it's jammed. When it happens like this, it naturally pulls pressure, puts pressure on each cell of the body, these cortisols. So what happens every cellular level, the, uh, the, there's an action on the cell. So the, the OGES with the immunity starts going down. So when the immunity going down, naturally you're, you're allowing people to come and uh, kill you. You're literally, we are all literally asking the viruses to come into our body. So they are happily entering the human body. 
So there's no point of uh, spending, uh, again, the waste of money, spending for so much of billions of money. You have to spend for the human consciousness. Developing this technology within the human, that can be a beautiful world, isn't it? And the mental health care is integral part of the swasthya. Swasthya is the healthy state. I already told you. Prasanna Atmendriya Manaha. If you see in Ayurveda, they talk about consciousness, consciousness, manas, indriyas. Indriyas means sensory organs and manas. These three areas they focus, the second segment in the sloka, which I said. That's why this great, this is the great science which works. Whereas in the psychiatry, you know, they work till intellect only. They, they start from manas, that is a mind and uh, uh, buddhi and ahankara. Ahankara means identity of a human being. I am Dr. Suresh. It's an identity. You are Amita. It's an identity. You need to be identified by some name or you need some identification. That is ahankara. But we are, we are left up to that angle only. That's why most psychiatric diseases in uh, US and Europe in countries, uh, no, all the countries, it's, they are suffering with depression, stress, and nervousness because they are working till intellect only. But there is no science which is going beyond the intellect level. That's consciousness, which is told in our ancient rishis. Okay, next one. Yeah, this is what I was telling. Prasanna Atma Indriya Manaha. Prasanna means a balanced state, a happiness state of Indriya's Manas. Is already we explained you. If you have that, then a person will have a, a quality of good mental health, efficient perception of, person, perception of reality, self-knowledge, self-esteem, all this voluntary control over the behavior, you know. We have a voluntary, there is no color. If you see, there, there, are, there are two kinds of nervous system is there, you know, voluntary and involuntary. So voluntary nervous system is the one. Uh, which you control by yourself. It's, it's a hand is there, you know. I, if I say something, if I think something, hand can go and put on the Zoom or it will what? It will take tea and drink. I, if I say my mind says, the, uh, the legs walks. So these are voluntary actions, voluntary nervous system. Involuntary is the one which you cannot control. With, with you. It happens by itself within the body, like cardiac functions, lung functions, liver functions, all the organs within the body, they're involuntary. You cannot control them, right? So to control those things also, there is a technology. So that is that technology is turning inwards you. We are always turning outside. That's the problem. We are completely, our sensory organs is focused outside, the, outside our body. That is why we are under stress and we are under heavy pressure to perform our work. Next slide, please. Mind is said to be, uh, I already described, I think, one of two boards of diseases and various therapeutic approaches and mentioned for the management of psychology. There are lots of diseases, there's a lot of management of psychological disorders are available in uh, ancient methods. There is, a, we also have the spiritual uh, preaching and chanting of mantras, or they're available in technologies, offerings and all these things uh, to the involved. What is spirituality? It's very badly understood, the word. The spirituality is nothing but enhancing your perception level. Spirituality is not, doesn't have any religion. It is not correct. Spiritual, what is spirituality exactly? The word meaning of spirituality is everybody's spirit. No, you have a spirit, I have a spirit. We are spiritual only. Those who have a spirit, they're spirituals. Why we are working on this area? What is spirituality? It's touching the consciousness. It's spirituality. Spirituality means it doesn't mean you sit in the one, one area of the home and meditate and go to the Himalayas and become yogi. No, that's not spirituality. Spirituality, the person who can touch the conscious level within staying in their own home. Why we are working on this area, on consciousness? Because our physical body, hands, legs, we have boundaries. I wanted to come to America now, at present this moment, I have to travel by aeroplane and come to you, come to uh, America or California. I want to go to India. I cannot go because my physical body needs some transport. So, so physically, physically we, are, we have a boundaries, you know. You can't do by yourself. That's why we invented aeroplanes. We invented uh, bicycles. 
We will because they're extension, they're access, access area of our own body, right? Telephone is access area of our own hear, hearing. Speech, now I'm speaking Zoom. It's an access area for me. Otherwise, I can't talk to you. In you, I'm, you are in US and I'm here in Europe. I can't talk to you without this technology. So these are all accessories. But how you reach beyond the physical state is the consciousness. Consciousness is not accessory. Consciousness has to be walked down. You have to analyze, you have to extend your physical level to reach this boundary, to reach this level of consciousness, okay? Uh, psychic involvement, and uh, here we wrote uh, uh, mantras, chanting mantras, and all those things, will, which will develop, which will enhance the perception levels. Again, I'm telling the same thing. What is spirituality? Spirituality is nothing but enhancing your own perception levels. Simple. By meditating, by doing yoga practices, by practicing Ayurveda, daily routines, seasonal routines, daily everything, timing of sleep, timing of eating, everything. Uh, works in favor of uh, improving your perceptions. Plus, meditating every day in the morning, all these things, you know, it will enhance your mental faculties. What is stress? Stress is nothing but lowering your own mental faculty functions. Another, I'm trying to give different explanations what is stress today. It is the lowering your mental faculties. It's stress. We are enhancing the mental, mental faculties. That is spirituality. The stress is lowering the mental faculties, enhancing the mental faculties is spirituality. So there is a big difference, opposite. Stress is opposite to spirituality. Then next, please. Yeah, this is also important. Uh, the three dimensions, uh, uh, we have a three dimensions, Vata, Pitta, Kapha. You know, we need to understand these Vata, Pitta, Kapha are nothing but their extension of Pancham Mahabhutas of the nature. We are the human being. We are composed of, what is a human being? Human is human being, nothing but the soil and water. Soil, water, air, it composes of you. You're born out of the planet and you're going to back into the planet. You're not going to the moon. You're not going to go Jupiter after the death. You're going to be buried here right now in the planet only. So you are born out of the Pancha Mahabhutas. You're going to absorb into the, reabsorb into the planet again. This is how the recycling takes place. Entire. So this composition of Pancha Mahabhuta, Pridvi of Tejo Vayur Akashaha, they said, earth, uh, fire, water, air, space, these five elements forms as Vata, Pitta, Kapha in the body. The nature makes the human composition as three elements. That's why in Ayurveda, very beautifully they, <coughs> they explain how to live with the nature. Repeatedly they tell in Ayurveda, how you can live with the nature. What does it mean nature? Nature is nothing but Pancha Mahabhutas. Pancha Mahabhutas, this entire cosmos, entire cosmos, everything, human, planet, everything is made up of five elements. These five elements uh, forms a composition in the human body called Vata Pitta Kapha. Vata, Again, the composition of air and space, you know, pitta is agni and fire and water, and kapha is a solid, you know, it's a prithvi and jala, that is water and earth. So, if you see the combination, that's why very nicely Ayurveda explained the vata characters, pitta characters, kapha characters, the physically how they work, look, mentally how they behave. So, the three elements, very beautifully, they mention how the society is, for example, vata is written here. The normally functions, the water is, you know, basically the functions of the nervous system, locomotion, and all the physical functions, respiratory, everything, you know, all the activities in the body is functioned by the water. I always call water as president. So rest everything. And if it is imbalanced, you know, if something happened because of the internal, uh, mostly 95%, the water and pitta kapha is disturbed because for our own. Uh, disharmony in the body, not from coronavirus. <laughs> Again, I'm coming to the, back to that. So it exhibits greater uh, all those things, okay? Uh, Manovikara, mental disorders can be defined as abnormal mental conditions, uh, impairment of manas uh, karma, it's written there. Here, three things we need to understand. Sattva, the strength of the mind has been explained in Ayurveda. Pravara, Madhyama, 
alpha. Pravara means higher, madhyama means medium, alpha means weaker. So the three kinds of mind variations, the, uh, according to that, the handling of the disease takes place. If the person is nicely built, very good in physically health, but he has got alpha sattva, means weak mind is there, he's prone for diseases. Or if the person is thin, uh, not much strength in the physically, but he has got pravara sattva, that means he has got very strong mental capacity, he can win the diseases. So to fight with the stress, these three is important, sattva. The strength of the mind is also important. Next, please. Balanced uh, here, psychosomatic disorders, this is involved both mind and we, we, uh, we understood that. Next, please. Yeah, this is what exactly I was mentioning earlier. Lifestyle based in harmony is a stress-free lifestyle. This is important. We are not we are not supposed to have any stress in the, and you know there is a stress management. Actually, why there is no need to manage the stress. You need to manage the circulation system. You need to manage your digestive system. You need to manage your sleep. You need to manage your heart functions. Why should we manage the stress? We don't need at all actually stress. It's not correct way to do that. Ayurveda never say anywhere is mentioned in the textbooks that we should manage the stress. No, they never mentioned. They said you enhance your perceptions, mental faculty perceptions. So principles to both mind and body and those practices of meditation, yoga, I already explained. So many people are like fear, anxiety, and depression. All these things is only one, one problem. That is your own disharmony, that's all. Next, please. Ayurvedic lifestyle also, that's why many, many teachers everywhere in the world and US and Europe everywhere, they try to understand what is Tridosha's concept and what are the constitutions, you know, what kind of body you have, your water, water body you have, Pitta body, Kapha body, actually there will be two composition all the time. There will be no single dosha will be there. There is always a composition. So this we need to understand the compositions of each body and what is the benefit of understanding the constitution is you can design your entire year. Like you, like you make your, uh, like you make organization for the entire year, plan for the life. For the economy, you make a graph. For the economy, you make organization. So constitution is nothing but organization of your own physiology for the entire year. So constitution is important. What to eat in this season? What to not eat this season? If you know the, your constitution, water, pitta, kapha, or whatever it is, you have constitutions, you can design your life properly. What will happen, the benefits is, you can prevent diseases, same time you can improve the immune system. Yeah, thanks please. Yeah, yeah we have a lot of uh, therapies, yoga, meditations, Ayurvedic practitioners, so it's success on this path, take patients, but please. Yes, it takes time, you know. Uh, there is a, there is no shortcut for the health. It has to be practiced and there is no weekend for health. It is a daily work and daily we have to work on this because the one which destroys every day is the human body. If you understand this philosophy, people will understand what is life. We all think that we live forever on the planet. It is not possible. The body is designed for destruction. If I say this word, people get abused, but this is the reality. So protecting them and designing them, if you design them properly, according to constitution, if you organize your body, you can live 100 years without disease. That's what Ayurveda says. Ayurveda never says that you will never die. No. Every day, everybody will die on one day. Only thing is, uh, one will go before, another will go after, but it's definite. Siriyate anena iti shariram means destruction is happening, but how to prevent this destruction? How to organize this destruction only? Ayurveda explains in a beautiful way that is developing hormony within you, developing the uh, immune system within you, not allowing the stress to dominate your own physiology, right? And there are herbs out there, Ashwagandha, Brahmi, Jatamamsi, Shankapushpi, thousands of fa are found out throughout the world. There are many herbs out there. Yes, herbs will help you some extent. 
herbs can help a human being 30 to 40 percent the rest is 60 percent is how you organize your lifestyle that's why ayurveda very nicely first they did not say about medicines they say how to live next please So the, I already explained this, uh, the stress is substance which found with, uh, within all cellular tissues of the mind. And ojas, you know, the ojas is present inside in every cell of the body. The ojas is nothing but a final end product of the uh, tissue byproduct. We have seven tissues up to Dhatu, we call it. Sarakta, Mamsa, Medhasti, Majashukra. Seven Dhatu. After the seventh Dhatu, there is an output. There is a byproduct. There is an end product of all the seven Dhatus is the ojas. That's why we, we, we call it as we term as it is, it's closer to immunity, we call them. So when the stress is happening more and more in every cell, the destruction of the ojas takes place at a faster pace. Even with those stress also, we can we lower immune system, immunity can be lowered, but it happens, it fastens the destruction with the st high stress levels, okay? Next, please. Ayurveda helps a person come to a better understanding of themselves and the relationship in the world around them. Again, the same thing, adopting the adaptation through the lifestyle, organization of your body is very important. Reckless, irresponsible behaviors can put you into deeper troubles. This is what exactly happening in the world right now. People are suffering because of the irresponsible behavior. The stress is high because of that. Next, please. Yeah, we have a different kind of uh, Ayurvedic. I, I spoke about uh, earlier, about pranayamas, yoga, and the technologies, which is available. I call them as technologies. You know, they are best devices available on the planet. So which, which can be performed by you. You doesn't need an instrument outside. The human body itself is an instrument to perform this technology. What a great science it is. Rest everything you see, we are using computer, we are using mobile, all the technologies, they're accessories to us. But here you're using your own human body to perform, becomes an instrument to perform this technology. That is why this science is great because you, you're using your own body as a technology, as an instrument to perform the technology. That's why uh, there are yoga, uh, yoga pranayamas and uh, meditations, they all are uh, high, why we do all these things? to higher our mental faculties. And we have uh, procedures out there like Shirodhara, Abhyanga, Shashti, Shali, Pindesh, Vedalam. This is important uh, treatment we do. Physical level is also very important to treat for the, to, below the, to lower the stress levels, not just only mind. I told you the mind is present not only in the brain, the mind is present in every cell in the body. Every cell is a human body. Every cell has a mind. So we have to treat the entire body. That's why Ayurveda gives some tree, specific treatments called Panchakarma. Different technologies is called Panchakarma. This is one of the technology which is used to de-stress, which also improves the skin complexion, which is also very good for uh, uh, improving the peripheral circulation, for arthritis, all the cases and stress. This procedure is very good. This is a combination of rice, milk, and uh, herbs we mix together and make a bolus like this and perform entire whole body. They will do a, a kind of, uh, it's a kind of fermentation therapy, which is very good for the Europeans and Americans because of the winter condition. It's really distressed themselves. Next, please. And Abhyanga, fantastic for distressing. Abhyanga is oil massage. Why we use oil? Oil is antidote of the water. So oil has got a different composition and vata has got different, vata is dry, cold. There are uh, some characters of vata is there. So we go against whatever the water qualities is there. We go opposite treatment we do. Oil is a very good antidote for vata. So vata, what happens is vata is increased. Stress is very high and peripheral nervous problem systems and very high stress levels, insomnia, all the problems comes out of these high stress levels. So Abhyanga is very good, oil massages, especially in the winter seasons, it's really good and brings down the stress levels beautifully. Next, please. Yeah, <laughs> these are the herbs, uh, uh, which is, is our own company here. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, we have we designed uh, some uh, herbs uh, uh, having the brahmi ashwagandha jata mamsi stress memo it's very very good herbs uh, we are giving three times a day and uh, fantastic uh, relief from the stress and adding to that pranayama can be done every day and the oil massages you can do weekly two days to distress yourself and these capsules can be taken every day and sleeping on time also bring down the stress this is very important people should go to bed by 11 o'clock get up and wake up at 6:30 or 7 o'clock in the morning that can also reduce the stress levels and these capsules on oil massages and ashwagandha brahmi most of you people will know knows it and ashwagandha is also nervine tonic it also helps the cellular functions it helps the neurological uh, functions it helps the neurotransmissions in the brain and the neurotransmission the peripheral nervous system and brahmi is a fantastic for the it works on the hypothalamus it increases the memory concentrations and improves the microcirculations in the brain next please now this is about our academy uh, we are running four years uh, syllabus academy one of the pioneering institutions in europe uh, this four years why why i took this four years uh, is the reason is because ayurveda cannot be studied in one week or two weeks this is not correct way to teach and you can can we study about human body in one day or one week not possible so there is a method to learn there is a method to uh, understand the we need to start start understanding what is ayurveda its basic anatomy physiology its pathology we need to it, we have a lot of uh, um, ayurvedic books are available roga nidana pathology is there anatomy physiology origin and uh, uh, origin and the history of ayurveda we need to know we need to we are teaching about ayurvedic psych, uh, psychology ayurvedic spirituality ayurvedic philosophy in the first year and second year we are talking about the pathology we are talking about the dravya guna ayurvedic herbs pharmacodynamics of all the individual herbs is taken uh, one of the finest uh, uh, ayurvedic herbs we have in india 3000 herbs are available in india uh, we are using in europe with the fantastic results everything is needed it's a complex you know human body needs just not just pranayama no just pranayama will not help you need a complex you need abhyang massages you need shirodhara everything you need plus you need herbs to uh, if you work on this level only you get a, a proper health that is why we teach all the things uh, in the four year and third year we give as ayurvedic practitioners program certification and fourth year we put it as higher diploma in india they do four and a half years we are doing four years in europe so that's a really a big achievement but it needs a lot of work to be done behind the screen next please i think uh, <clears throat> we are done yeah, we, we told uh, one more is the institution's names was there i think oh yeah yeah so if one, someone wants to become an ayurveda practitioner we have all the details here about yeah, the yeah. Uh, four academy. years uh, diploma online yeah. we, are, we have we are doing in ireland slovenia france ukraine and uk and uh, wow. we have a turb neem zagreb london and cork and ukraine uh, so we have addresses and everything yeah amita ji you want to ask something yeah yeah no no i i thought if um, uh, you know we can just uh, i think it's very beautiful the way you described it. it's very profound and 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 um, you know the way you talked about the physiology the internal physiology that we have to think um, rather than the external factors and and i think you know the problem is I, i'm not an ayurveda doctor i'm a, you know a general public um, so the, the one of the issues i think what has happened in the last 15 or maybe more years on the uh, advent of the technology we are all um, very uh, you know more work from a work point of view you know the, there's a lot of work there is a <clears throat> nuclear family you know how we used to kind of live in the community there's a more like an um, you know single uh, not single but generally you know nuclear family concept if you're a family uh, you you're not socializing the community angle is because you don't have time because of the work and then the food is uh, laden with a lot of uh, antibiotics from the you know for, from the meat now there is a toxins in the all the dishwashing and so many other things that have come into play um, in in all of our lives for that matter to add to the stress and then the physiology what you're talking about 
you know, from an average person point of view, you are so uh, enamored by the marketing that's happening in the, you know, in, in the television or other media that, you know, pop up pill that you will be fine. So all that has been happening for the last 15 years. How do you start educating? Right? That is where uh, I feel as a, as a normal person, as an end user, what I feel is, 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 has been a problem that I didn't even know myself, to be honest with you. And up until two, three years back, you know, that there are so many different tools that are available in Ayurveda because I didn't know the depth of Ayurveda. Of course, I know yoga, but not the depth, what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, you see, yes. Uh... Yes, I understood. I understand that uh, we are eating foods, and we, that's why uh, the, uh, in uh, in ancient sciences they very clearly describe food. If you want to live on the planet, food only thirty five to forty percent will allow you to live. Yeah, sixty percent you doesn't need food to live. Okay. So because well, the problem is we are ninety percent depending on the food. Yeah, this is the problem. This method of thinking process should change. If you can yeah. uh, go for, that's why I always tell my students, you know, it's not the organic food you eat. You need the organic lifestyle. Yeah. So just because there are so many people that are taking organic food, but why they are deceased? They should be healthy, you know? Yeah. Yesterday, today also, I was talking to the students in the class. I was telling them, there is two difference between the Europeans and Indians, Asian, the treatment areas. One is in Europeans, they are well nourished physically, mentally not nourished. In India, physically not nourished, mentally okay, nourished. But now situation is changing in India also now. The things are not, that's why, the human focus is too much. The front end of the life should not be food. This is the problem. If the front end of the life is the economy, entire, see, if you see the entire world we are running, the front end of our life is the economy. That should change. If that is going on like this, then nothing can stop in disastrous of the human uh, existence itself. Yeah. The economy, see, those days, 100 years back, 200 years back, Amitaji, there was no technology, you know, there's no WhatsApps. Yeah. <laughs> there is no Zoom. Even 50 years back, there was no, 10 years back, there was no Zoom. Yeah. There is no Facebook, nothing. No, people were living. They were living yeah. better, actually. Right? But now we see we have Zoom, we have uh, so many technologies available, but why we are under stress? Mm -hmm. So what does it mean? It means two things. Our front end is becoming more and more and more narrowing towards the economy. Mm -hmm. The second is followed by technology. Yeah. You're losing your own existence, you know. You're totally on it. I'm not against the technology. I'm also using technology. But mm -hmm. why can't you uplift your own technology within your body? Yeah. I That's said you very clearly, our body should be designed, is, is an instrument by yourself. Mm -hmm. We are an instrument. Why can't we use this instrument to, uh, to upgrade ourselves? Instead of depending on external sources. So the front end of the life should not be economy. That's why people are under pressure under these things. Mm -hmm. You know, The front end of life should be harmony within you. Yeah. If, if you are harmony within yourself, if I, if I am in balanced condition, I say, uh, Amitaji is a very good person, very good lady, okay? If I am not in balanced condition, I will abuse you. Mm -hmm. It's what exactly happening in the world. Yeah. Because they don't know what to do. People, they are under high pressure, stressful, yeah. and cortisols, you know, when they are in a, uh, they're such a peak. I've seen many women uh, recently, productin is more than 1,000, you know, it's increased like anything. Yeah. So what happens is they don't know what's happening within themselves. They're not able to analyze. This is the problem. Mm -hmm. When you're not able to analyze at minutest level, physical changes and mental changes within your own body, yeah. 
and you're trying to find the solution outside the body, how it will work out. It will not work out. So the best is the problems is within your body and you're trying to find the solution outside your body. Mm -hmm. Outside the solution, what you can get at the most, you can get uh, uh, food and you can get uh, some comfort. That's all you will get, but nothing you will get outside. You may get some money, Thou, millions of euros you may get, but you may get a lot of comfort. Will that is going to be enough for the harmony within your body is debatable. So that's why the, our perception of life should change. Yeah. In Ayurveda, very, that is why Ayurveda is called as, it's not just medical science. You know, Ayurveda is a profound medical system mm -hmm. and highly advanced uh, uh, medical system it is on the planet. Let me tell you, frankly, so highly advanced. They touch the level where these people now present, uh, 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 scientists could not even understand what is Ayurveda. What we learn is nothing, it's just 15, 20%. I'm telling you what I'm speaking to you today, it's minimum knowledge of Ayurveda I have. It's a profound knowledge, which is beyond the human understandings. So when you are trying to understand for this genius of Ayurveda, you need first education. That's what I took up this project. That's right. To educate the public. Absolutely. Then you should remove the front end. It should not be the economy. Once we remove the front end of economy, our life, I think people will come out of the problems. No virus is going. I'm telling you, if you continue like this, I told you why this virus is affecting. Because I told you what, what's to happen 10, 15 years. Yeah. These are all, we have created the human body, the lowest level. Mm -hmm. of immune system. So you are exposed, you are vulnerable. We are vulnerable mentally and physically. So which food will help you? No. No, I think food yeah. will help you. Absolutely. No, I think a very profound, um, I mean, the underlying message for our viewer, viewers is to understand the physiology of your yourself, you know, and that's what Dr. Suresh is uh, saying, um, is that understand yourself, introspection, you know, he talked about the consciousness, he talks about a lot of different tools that are available right now, but maintaining a daily regimen is also important. You can't just do one day and then expect magic to happen. Right, that's what Dr. Suresh is advocating. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you so much. I know you're very busy. Um, I really, from bottom of my heart, uh, really want to thank you. Hope to our all our viewers, please watch this amazing session. And you know, the whole idea what we are trying to do is educate all of us, including me. I did not know anything, and and I want other people to be educated, including people like me who are the end users how we can live a better and a healthier life. With that, thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you very much uh, for uh, Amita Ji and Narish Doc. And I wish all the uh, people who are watching this and friends of Amita Ji to be safe and secure. And I wish you a good day today. Have a sweet Sunday. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you.